That's one small step for Robot Dog. Robot Dog. What's up guys, it's Nick here. Before I start off today's video, I just want to thank every single one of you for watching and sharing my previous video. I was fortunate enough to be reached out by Arduino to talk about my project at their event which happened on the 27th of March. They were also kind enough to send me two packages that include some merchandises and also their newest kit called the Opla IoT Kit which contains some sweet electronics in it. So thank you so much Arduino, I'll be making some videos with the kit in the future but today will be all about newest kinematics. The goal was to make it walk, and the motion that made the most sense to me is for its leg to move along a semi-circular path. But to be able to draw any kind of circular shapes, you first need to be able to give inputs to the vertical and the horizontal axis. For simplicity, I'm going to call this the z-axis and this the x-axis. I have already covered the inverse kinematics for the z-axis in the previous video. If you haven't already, you can check it out, link is in the description. So now, the objective is to implement the inverse kinematics for the x-axis. Here's a simplified drawing of the leg. We want it to move along here according to our input. Let's say right now I want to move its leg forward. It would be something like this. We know that this angle equals to this angle. And this angle equals to the up tangent of the input x over c. When the leg moves forward or backward, this length will change as well. We can calculate it by dividing this value by cos theta. So here are the codes based on what we did just now and also in the previous video. By the way, I've cleaned up the codes quite a bit. Instead of using the setPWM function, I created a function and mapped 0 to 180 degrees to 500 to 2500 microseconds such that I can use the right microseconds function to control the servos more precisely. So let's upload it and try it out. If I increase the X, the legs should move to the front. And if I decrease the X, the legs should move to the back. So now that its legs can receive inputs from the Z axis and the X axis, let's make it move in a semicircular path. So here's the trajectory that I plan for its legs to follow. Not sure how well will it work, but I'm just gonna give it a shot. The equation for this is quite simple. It's basically just a circle formula. Here are the codes. I'm going to control it using the serial monitor. Remember to subtract z from your equation here since the legs will retract and extend during the trajectory. So let's try it out. Everything seems fine, so I decided to let it walk on the table. But then... The problem was, the design was too heavy. When I was designing this dog, I thought about a lot of things in my head, but there are some things which I just couldn't imagine. I needed a physical model to study. So right now, there are a few flaws that I identified. First, it is tail heavy. Secondly, the room for its legs to retract is pretty limited. And thirdly, because there are some offsets between the legs and the pivot point of the shoulder servo, the inverse kinematics for side stepping is way too complicated. I kinda solved the equations, but it was way too complicated to code. But I didn't want to give up yet. I want to go as far as I can with this dog before proceeding to the next one. That way, I can discover more things to fix and come up with a better version 2. So to solve the tail heavy problem, I need to be able to pitch its body. I want the pivot point to be at the center of its body, so it will be a circle with the radius being half of the length between the front and the rear legs. When the body pitches upwards, I'll add the sign of the pitching angle multiplied with the radius to the front legs and move them back a little bit by 96.425 multiplied by 1 minus the cosine of the pitching angle while doing the opposite for the rear legs. To pitch the body downwards, just flip everything around. So here are the full inverse kinematics codes for everything that I've talked about so far. I also included some commands to control it with the serial monitor. So that's about everything that this robot dog can do. 
I received a few emails on the last video asking for my code. So in this video, I'll post the full codes down in the description below. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, remember to leave me a like and subscribe and share it with your friends. In the next video, I'll introduce you to version 2 of my robot dog which will eliminate all the fundamental flaws that this version had and it will be wireless as well. So until then, stay tuned and stay safe.